Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here with us today. I want to recognize, uh, first of all, President Megan Green, Alder, Alder People, Sonia, who's with me, uh, Schweitzer, Browning, and Aldridge, and also former Alder person and Gracia uh, here today, and also our tenant leaders. I'm so excited to be here to sign Board Bill 59, often called the Right to Counsel Bill to strengthen protections for tenants in our city. Stable homes create stable communities where neighbors get to know each other. That sense of togetherness, of community, is one of my fondest memories growing up on the West Side. It's what kept us safe, even allowed us to play outside until the street lights came on. There's no doubt that housing instability drives poverty. When we protect tenants, we make sure families have a safe place to stay and we are addressing a major root cause of crime in our neighborhoods and across our entire city. In a city where almost 60% of households are renters, this is an important resource to help St. Louisans get the support they need in some of their darkest times. It provides access to hardworking St. Louis families who historically have not been able to get access to legal services or support on their own. This bill will help St. Louisans like Damon, a resident of the 11th Ward and a leader with We the Tenants and a Neighborhood Leadership Fellows Program whose family has faced eviction in the past. It'll help students like Keith who lives in the 6th Ward as he works towards a degree at UMSL and a better future. It's just one of the many initiatives to help make sure St. Louisans have a roof over their head with stable and safe housing. The city is working to provide resources to help families stay housed, expand our pool of affordable housing, and promote home ownership. Through rental assistance, St. Louis helped nearly 5,000 families pay their rent during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. In partnership with the Real Estate Tax Assistance Fund, we've saved dozens of families' homes from tax sale. In partnership with SLDC and community providers, the city is building and rehabbing more than 40 affordable housing units north and south of Del Mar. SLDC is also developing a program to assist families with down payment assistance to promote long-term home ownership. And if that's not enough, SLDC, CDA, and the Affordable Housing Commission are making unprecedented investments in affordable housing. We have over 200 single family homes in the production pipeline and with 13 low income housing tax credit projects representing over a thousand affordable units awarded in the 2021 and 2022 rounds alone, St. Louis has never been more competitive. But we need to remember, this bill today is just the first step in what will be a long-term project. It'll take time to scale up this effort to meet demand and its success requires the partnership of our legal service provider community in hiring and the retaining of legal professionals necessary to offer the support outlined in this bill. Standing up this program will not happen overnight, but know that the city will work hard every day to move this process forward. I wanna thank the current Board of Aldermen as well as former Alderwoman Christine Ingracia for working closely with my office to pass this bill. It's a testament to what we can accomplish when we work together to prioritize people and recognize that housing is a human right. I wanna thank the tenant leaders and activists who pushed for this legislation to help protect renters and families across our city. And now I'm proud to turn it over to my friend, President Megan Green. Today, St. Louis becomes the 22nd jurisdiction in our country to establish a right to counsel program for evictions, and it could not come at a more opportune time. Between the ongoing affordable housing crisis and the end of COVID era moratoriums, tenants are in a precarious position. Balancing the relationship between landlords and tenants is key to addressing housing insecurity in our city. And keeping people in their homes is the baseline for economic stability and mobility and an important step in forwarding tenants' rights. But this work does not end today. This fall, the board will continue to advocate for tenants by introducing a Tenants' Bill of Rights and a re rental registry, 
rental registry program to better support tenants and hold problem landlords accountable. This work is absolutely necessary to keep more St. Louisans in their homes and out of predatory situations that can be impossible to recover from. But this is also personal to me. Over 10 years ago, um, probably closer to 15 years ago now, I was appointed to something called the Vanguard Cabinet that then Mayor Slay had. And as part of that, um, it was a group of young professionals who came together to say things that we needed as young professionals to better support us in staying in this city. One of the things that we came to the table with was more tenant rights. You know, as somebody who had just moved to St. Louis, I had had my fair share of problematic landlords, landlords that didn't fix a mouse infested apartment or ones that were had ants coming through the, the walls. Uh, and when I complained to the city about what was happening, um, my landlord, instead of fixing the issue, sent me an eviction notice. I knew my rights and I knew that they could not do that and I was lucky to be able to avoid eviction court and keep that off my record, which would have made it difficult for me to access housing for years to come. We know today we are taking a very integral step to making sure that all people in our city, all renters in our city know their rights and have those basic protections and representation in court so that when they are presented with situations like the one that I went through in my 20s, they are supported, protected, and we can help keep more people in their homes. I am so grateful to renters, advocates, Mayor Jones administration and my colleagues at the board for working together to make this possible. In particular, I wanna thank former Alderwoman Christine Ingracia, who is now my uh, operations director, who was the first to introduce this legislation at the Board of Aldermen, and Alderwoman Shamim Clark Hubbard, who got it over the finish line this legislative session. It's my sincerest hope that this process serves as a model for how we make change in our city as we work to ensure that safe, affordable housing isn't a privilege, but is rather a right for all. And with that, I will turn it over to Kennard Williams of Action St. Louis. Good morning. It's been a minute since we've been in that room, this room right here. Action St. Louis has remained committed to organizing to addressing the housing crisis that has impacted communities across the region. The state of evictions in St. Louis before 2020 saw a city that let people slip through the cracks with no support in the system, facing the hurdles and challenges strewn throughout the path of families navigating the eviction process. The COVID-19 pandemic and the economic damage it caused to households exacerbated the crisis and laid bare the ripple effect of displacement that members of our community have been dealing with for years. Policies like right to counsel come from a core belief that housing is a human right. Understanding that belief, tenants' right to counsel is rooted in knowing that when it comes to housing, how powerful it is, how much of a difference and impact it can make in someone's life. As a society, as a city, we should be doing more to protect this critical human right. The landscape for renters is filled with perilous threats and obstacles. Bad actors such as greedy property management companies and slumlords that weaponize evictions to bully and victimize renters are in no short number. Even worse, a family that has fallen on bad times and faced eviction years before can continue to be haunted by it long after. With past eviction dictating school districts, families can attend the services their children receive and the safety of any future housing. With the added inequities of being unable to afford legal assistance after one's housing is threatened, it becomes very clear that the deck is stacked against renters. Action St. Louis and Art City Defenders started the We the Tenants campaign to answer the needs of our communities. A demand for safe housing. Respect and dignity for the renters who make up more than half the city of St. Louis. And a demand for justice for the 33% of those evictions that are solely targeted in black communities and with an even more disproportionate amount of that number composing of black women. When this campaign started, we asked a basic question to community members. What do you think renters deserve? They in turn, through months of political education, meetings, canvassing, and feedback, drew the roadmap to tenants' rights that we currently have. 
Right to counsel in St. Louis is a testament to the strength of the strong people and the organizing that St. Louis has at its core. To our members and leaders in the community at large, we'd be forever grateful for your leadership, involvement, the work that you put in through countless meetings with elected officials, testimony, and planning to make this happen. Y'all did that. To the elected officials and the staff who helped carry this legislation through, thank you for taking a step forward and proving your commitments to tenants' rights for the renters in this city. Your hard work and resolve in standing with the people on this, it is our hope that this is the first step of many to secure more protections for renters in St. Louis. Our city is not perfect, none are. Renter affirming legislation like this in St. Louis presents an opportunity to change its course from a city where some of the most vulnerable fall to the cracks to one where they are given the tools and have legal defense when their housing is under threat because we know the housing court is packed every day with people who do not and, who, and we do not turn a blind eye to it. But it will take work to get the St. Louis that we wanna see and to keep it. It will take renters who are organized and ready to fight to see those protections materialize and it will take elected officials with conviction, political will, and dedication to their constituents to make these policies into law. It is to that end, the Action St. Louis and the We the Tenants campaign stand committed to seeing this and future tenant protections realized. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to turn the mic over to our leader in We the Tenants, Damon Starks. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Damon Starks. I am, a, I am with uh, We The Tenants under Action St. Louis, and I live in the 11th Ward. So <clears throat> I just want to say, first off, thank you. Thank you for those that made this happen. Thank you for passing Board Bill 59, Tenants Right to Council. This legislation will truly help a lot of renters here in the city. Hardworking people in the city who have always been here, doing, what the, uh, doing the most to make ends meet. Let me, say, let me say that again. Renters here are hardworking people <laughs> who, who are going who are doing the most that they can to make ends meet. In this city, half of the uh, renter occupies, uh, we, are, we are your neighborhood. So with that, uh, we, can, we can talk about what makes our community strong. It is the people in it. So we should do more to make, uh, to make it sure that say it, that that's the public safety. Let me do this. There we go. I got involved with We The Tenants because I know all firsthand what it's like to be evicted. Been evicted twice as a kid here in the city of St. Louis. Being bounced home to home living with family members, living under other people rules. I know what that's like. So this bill will ensure that that would not happen to another person. The trauma of living with family members. Y'all don't know, for those who know, can only say that. So, Programs like, like Right to Council provide legal defense for people who otherwise would not have ability to obtain it. This is how we protect our communities. This is how we keep people safe from corporate management companies and landlords that victimize renters by buying up what is affordable housing, extracting predatory uh, rent and utilize evictions against the people who want better conditions. I work on the Homes Guarantee Campaign to try 
to get an executive order from the president to help regulate rents because I know the importance of housing in this community. My experience is not solitary. I know countless of people who have been in this same terrible situation. This is a chance to end, end that, and I am proud to have worked with a campaign that's doing so. Talking, talking to my neighbors, working to educate people and helping them realize their own power. As of today, a lot of people who is facing eviction now have the right to counsel. We'll give people who feel voiceless, they will now have a voice and a say so in their current situation. So once again, I thank you Thank all of you for passing board bill 59 right to council. And now I pass it to Mr. Keith Reese. Morning everybody. Morning. Can you guys can you guys hear me? Do I have to lean closer? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Didn't nobody told me it was gonna be televised, so <laughs> Yeah, my name is Keith Reese. I'm a student, a worker, and a renter here in the city of St. Louis. And um, I have had some troubles with housing in the past. Uh, on a student's wage, I have had to live in some apartments that, let's say, were substandard. Uh, oops. Essentially, essentially a slum. And the building had mice, mold, it had all kinds of issues. The AC was broken. Uh, I did not notice these issues when I first moved in because the, um, the, land, the landlord had just recently replaced the roof, did it himself, and had done it improperly, which caused water intrusion in the building and mold to build up beneath the carpet and underneath the, uh, beneath the walls and the paint. Uh, when I left for a week, I came back and discovered the mold had spread to my belongings. I had to throw out a lot of clothes and a lot of furniture. And... Uh, despite all that, I had no legal recourse. Uh, there was no way I could afford a lawyer uh, to fight uh, what had happened to me. And if I had ceased paying rent until that landlord had fixed what was wrong, uh, he would have taken me to court and I would have been evicted. Mm -hmm. um, I have faced illegal rent increases. My father, who was a disabled veteran, has faced illegal rent increases on a fixed income. And it is landlords like that that make it harder for working people in this city to continue to make ends meet when we are already paying up to half of our income mm -hmm. and rent in the first place during an inflationary crisis after a pandemic. Mm. So it is because of that that I am so grateful to everyone who made this happen. Um, I'm so happy that St. Louis joins the cities that now have a tenant's right to counsel because even, the, even before tenant's right to counsel, I knew my rights as a tenant but now, thanks to Tenants' Right to Council, I actually have the means to fight for those rights. Uh, thank you for listening to my story. Have a nice day. How do you follow up Keith and Damon? <laughs> Since I'm the... Can you... Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Since I'm the last person, I will definitely keep it brief. Um, so in the indelible words of, of Nina Simone, it's a new day, it's a new dawn for renters and renter workers in St. Louis, and we are so excited and ecstatic for it. So for, for those of you who all who don't know, I'm Sharon, I use she, her pronouns, I'm with Home for All St. Louis, and we at Home for All St. Louis, along with our partners in action, <coughs> partners in action, action, no pun intended, um, <laughs> our partners at action, our partners with EHOC, our partners with, and if I don't name you, please forgive me because I only have two minutes, but we are partners at LSEM with all our partners that we have been working with, MCU, um, we, have been tr we have been struggling for a few years to get right to council off the ground and, and uh, with, with Christine and Gracia who first introduced it. And last year, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I did not think we would necessarily be in this place because of opposition. 
Because there are some folks, believe it or not, who think that I, if I'm evicted, don't deserve a lawyer. How dare they? But there are some people who think that. And there are also some people who think that, why should we fund this program? We have so many other issues and so many other things that we're facing in the city. But I will tell you this, as someone with experience and being evicted more than once, once as a child and once as an adult, I can tell you emphatically for sure that right to counsel is exactly what we need to spend our money for, and it's the exact kind of program that will, that will help renters to avoid evictions, which, which cause displacement, which cause children not to be able to go to school for a full, full year, which cause families to live with folks they don't want to live with. I understand, Damon, I had to live with a cousin I didn't, I didn't even like. And so, <laughs> and, and, so, and so my point is that like we have been trying for years to wrest power from renter by wrest power lorded over by renters from landlords through legislation such as this. And now the playing field will be more even between renters, renter workers, tenants, and landlords. And we are ecstatic, but please believe we are looking toward the future. We understand the importance of this right and the extension of further rights, not only in this city, but in this region. Uh, we have our eye on implementation, evaluation, and continued funding. So of course, we wanna thank the sponsors of the bill. We wanna thank the co-sponsors of the bill, Mayor Jones, um, President Green. We wanna thank everyone who worked on this together. But the most important people in this fight have been the tenants. The tenants. <laughs> It was tenants, it was their, I don't know if y'all remember the powerful testimony that we had at both hearings, oh, how many hearings did we have, like four? But at all the hearings, we had powerful testimony. And we, and, and, and courage, they made this happen. And our tenants, our renters, will continue to fight for more power and for more rights so that they live, with, they live safely, affordably, and with dignity. Because housing, of course, is a human right. Thank y'all so much. Nick, Mayor Jones, I'd like to ask you, just because we've had so many examples already today of the people who look to benefit from today's action, can you explain some of the mechanisms we have in this, uh, this bill to make sure these are the people getting this help? I think there are some critics who might say, well, you know what, landlords need to make their money. They need their renters' money. Can we make sure, are there ways to make sure that people aren't taking advantage of your work today? So I'm going to have the president answer that question because sure. this came through the... Perfect. <laughs> sure. Thank you, President Green. So um, I want to be clear that this, fir this is a first step getting this program up and running. And in years um, after this, we're going to need additional funding to uh, contract with attorneys and make sure that we can handle the capacity of folks that need assistance. To start off though, this is being tailored um, toward people living in zip codes in the city that have the highest number of evictions. And so we're trying to target it toward need so that we can understand then the, the greater capacity that's needed for the future and then hopefully provide that funding in the future uh, to take care of that need. Mayor Jones, uh, I'm sorry, ahead. Maria. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, whoever wants to What about these absent landlords? Well, we see like they have vacant buildings and they're so hard to get in contact with. What will you do with those? Is there a plan in place for that yet? So that's a separate process that we're working through our building division. Uh, we have a stabilization program uh, that we're targeting absent uh, or vacant properties and uh, stabilizing them and actually billing the owner of that property once that property has been stabilized. If I could add something to mm -hmm. that as well. the. Um, some of the legislation that I mentioned in my remarks, the rental registry that we'll be bringing forth this fall, um, seeks to help along those lines. Um, one of the things that, that we're looking at requiring is a local contact 
for property. Um, because one of the challenges, is, as everybody knows, is we might have a property that's registered to an LLC out of a PO box in California, and you send notice <laughs> after notice after notice and never can get in contact with someone. But requiring a local agent to be registered with that property will hopefully make it a little bit easier to get in contact with some of the problem landlords. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, are there any other questions? Austin, do you have a question? Sure. Uh, there have been some concerns about a lack of means testing for this. Do you have any concerns that the city might end up representing people with big condos in the central West? No, I don't have a concern for that. As President Green talked about in her previous uh, answer, we're targeting uh, zip codes with the highest amount of evictions um, that we're, where we know that there's an issue. So uh, we're definitely, this is a need-based program. All right. All right. Thank you. We're All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Everyone filter in. You're first. Get up there. I'm going to invite you right here. All right. Shorter people up front. Sure, people up 